All right, so now we're going to hear about Digivol from Rihanna today. And she's with the Australian Museum. So I thought I'd just give a bit of an outline about what Digivol is. I know a lot of you have heard about Digivol and um, I, didn't know, I wasn't sure how many people know that it's available for um, institutions to use. So I thought that I'd just do a quick outline of it. So Digivol is a crowdsourcing citizen science um, initiative run by the Australian Museum Centre for Citizen Science and in, in a collaboration with Atlas of Living Australia. So we initially started Digivol online in 2011 um, as a way of, to help the Australian Museum to digitise our um, museum specimens. So the images that we had taken of our specimens, let's go to the next one. Um, we presented citizen scientists with an image of our um, museum specimens and then a template for them to transcribe all the data into. So this was a way of us to get our information into our museum database and then obviously share it with Atlas of Living Australia and therefore everyone. So in time, um, the Digivol programmers made it that any institution could use Digivol and load their images um, from their own desks in their own workplaces. So this en enabled um, institutions around the world to upload their images and engage citizen scientists. Um, in extracting data and information from their, their images. So why is it so important to engage citizen scientists in, in these, um, this kind of work? Well, it's, it's important because uh, a lot of researchers' time can be spent um, extracting the data before they can analyse it. So getting citizen, citizen scientists to help out in that um, way cuts down in, you know, further on for the researchers. Um, so there's many institutions and museums around the world that hold scientific, um, scientifically important objects. Um, and these objects come in, in forms of you know, scientific labels, notebooks and diaries, recording sheets, registers and photographs. Um, not all of the objects have, digital, have a digital record attached to them. Um, and so therefore they're not accessible to everyone. So by capturing this data into a digital form, then, then this information can be accessed worldwide. So it's important to be able to access this, in, this information. So researchers can use it by, um, it, hel it helps scientists and planners to better understand and manage um, our biodiversity. So, um, on Digivol, we have, loosely um, grouped things in three different categories. Um, the first one is collection labels, so that would be specimen, um, museum specimens, herbaria specimens, um, things with, with labels um, attached to them. The next one is historical documents, so that can be registers or field notes, um, things that are handwritten that need to be transcribed. Then we have, we've recently uh, incorporated wildlife spotter into Digivol. So this is the camera trap images and we've got our citizen scientists going through those, those images. So I thought I'd show you a couple of examples of um, things that we've had on, on Digivol. Um, we have collections from all around the world and we've had um, from all different uh, collections like um, mineral collection, uh, insects, we've had crabs, we've had herbaria sheeps, we've had a whole, a whole range. And basically citizen scientists will transcribe the labels um, that are associated with these, these specimens. We also have the field notebooks um, and recording sheets and registers. So this is handwritten stuff that, pe that people transcribe and then they also extract some of the data from that about the species and the location that they were found. 
we've got um, the wildlife spotter camera trap images. Um, so not only is, are we asking citizen scientists to identify what animals and what species are in the images, but we're also presenting them with um, images and asking them questions about the images that might be about um, the behaviours and things of the animals in the pictures. So why, why do citizen scientists do it? Um, so they feel, we've asked them, and they feel that it's, it's a rewarding experience knowing that the information they capture becomes accessible to scientists, um, conservation agencies and government departments. Um, many have an interest in uh, natural history and cultural uh, museum collections. They enjoy doing something that's worth, that they think is worthwhile and they enjoy making a contribution to the field of biodiversity. Um, it's also an important resource for online citizen scientists um, wanting to volunteer from home because not everyone can go. Um, it might be physically impossible for them to go somewhere. So DigiVol is important for those online, for those citizen scientists who want to participate. Um, it's also, we have quite a lot of full-time workers who contribute to DigiVol because they can at any time. They can do it at night. So to date, um, DigiVol has about 45 institutions around the world um, using it. We have institutions like the Natural History Museum in London, um, Kew Gardens, New York. We have many Australian museums and institutions, um, libraries, Saving Our Species, a lot of institutions around Australia using it. Um, the citizen scientists have completed 772,000 transcriptions or tasks on, on, on the site, and that averages out to be about 15,500 per month. So the take home message here is if you'd like to be a citizen scientist, um, you can go to digivol.org and join us and help, help out. But also, if you're an institution or an individual that has a project that you think might suit Digivol, um, please contact us at digivol at ostmas.gov.au or just come and talk to me at some time during the next two days. Thank you.